Um, here are everyone. I'm Ella Van Sagen and I'm over at Massey University and I'm just going to walk you through what I'm doing in my PhD project. So I'm looking at large deep-seated landslides um, in the Wanganui Rangitake Hill country. So why large landslides? Well, so it should be focus a bit we've talked about about shallow landslides and earth ones. Um, but these large landslides, particularly many of the edge in soft rock in New Zealand, are one of the key agents of landscape evolution, and produce a lot of sediment and child waterways. Um, they're long lived and particularly slow moving, and they can fail quite rapidly as well, though. So in New Zealand, there are about 7,000 of these large landslides that have been mapped. But the key point is, we don't really know the ages of many of them all. And to understand the long-term impacts, I, this, this is really important. So my goal is to <laughs> research this, answer this question. Um, and erosion, so they're producing large amounts of sediment uh, in the Rangitake catchment, is estimated to be about 3 to 20% of the contribution over time. So one of the other questions I'm asking, you know, is is erosion um, impacted by anthropogenic activity? Uh, is the erosion over time consistent? What are what are these patterns? So my research summary and objectives. So I am aiming to contextualize the evolution of the landslides in the Wanganui Rangitake region and assess causal links between the paleo environment and landslide activity, as well as quantify the rates of sediment delivery. So, three key parts of the project. The first is obtaining absolute ages so I can validate the next step of the project. So, this is done via coring, taking sediment samples, and the samples taken from these cores will give us a bare minimum age of the left targeted landslide. Second objective is using multi-metric variables um, to develop a landslide dating tool that can hopefully be applied to a wide variety of capturing around New Zealand. And the third part of the project builds on the initial two, and this is using that multi-metric tool to predict the landslide ages and estimate the long-term average risk. So the study area, well, we know we rank the hill country, uh, lots of it. So primarily soft rock sediments, but there are volcanic influences coming in from the type of volcanic zone, Gruapehu, uh, and so on. And that's actually really helpful because we can use these differences that are present in the hidden cores as chronological markers. So I'm focusing on three major catchments in the area, Wanganui, the Mungafero, and the catchment, and the land sides there. And then once the tool is developed, hopefully being able to apply that on a wider scale. So with the coring, uh, so we have these small lakes that form in the depressions of landslides. And I will, so I've, I've been on two field campaigns already, and I've got cores from the Rangitiki catchment and Barrow catchment. And with the coring, we've had to be quite targeted in our approach. So looking at those really large landslides, the landslides that impact infrastructure, and the landslides that are in close proximity to rivers based on their contribution sediment to the catchment. So once I've got these cores and I've processed them and I have samples, I run the so radio carbon analysis to get an age. And in some landslides, taking calls from several sites because where we suspect that there might be retrogressive activity and the landslide is subsequently failing backwards towards the head scalp. So, for example, here's one of our coring sites at Tarari Road where site one and site two are detected with this retrogressive activity. And we have some ages here as well for the landslide. So having these absolute ages is really key to being able to validate the model, the multi-metric model. So moving on. So when I'm talking about multi-metrics, it's that idea that you can see the difference in landslide ages 
via morphometric features. So the top, on an old landslide, for example, you'd expect to see the more developed drainage network, uh, fewer lakes, and in comparison, your, your young landslide, you've got those fresh surface scars and more lakes that are formed in the deposits. So to do this uh, morphometric analysis, I've looked at a range of variables to test, and I extract this data using the orbit imagery from mm -hmm. horizons um, and the DSM that's been produced from that. Ideally, I would have had LIDAR, but that's the limitations of working in my study area. And so uh, some variables are found to have more weighting than others. Uh, topographic roughness index, for example, you seen that stuff as roughness feature and it's being more effective. What I did is I set up a trial run of these morphometric variables. So, for example, this is just based on a small subset of 14 landslides uh, that have objectively been assessed as okay, these ones are really young, these ones are really old, and to see you know, what are the most effective variables to use in this case. And it turned out, uh, in this case, the terrain ruggedness, um, which was to be expected, and drainage network as well. And mm -hmm. so building on from that, um, looking at applying this to a catchment wide scale. So in the Rangitia Care catchment, I've gone through and tested these variables on a much larger subset of landslides. So 75 in this catchment. And then I'm applying this as well to the, the other catchments mentioned in the study area. So once I have all this data completed, I can build on that. And the next steps of the project so it is the development and the sediment budget. So basically I can do a paleo reconstruction of the original DSM to, and then use that to determine the rates of sedimentation over time. And again, applying that on a regional scale. So the data goes towards improving understanding of long-term sedimentation rates and the impact of landslides on catchments. Thanks. Yeah.